Hey guys, welcome to my Surfer SEO review video. In today's video, I'm going to review one of the best on-page SEO tools in the market right now, and I'm going to show you exactly how a lot of SEOs, including myself, are using it to get great results in the SERPs. Now, whether you've already read my Surfer SEO review article here or not, I'm going to show you a tutorial video basically so you can get a better understanding of how to use this tool, what the interface is like, and basically what you can expect once you start optimizing for your target keywords. And it doesn't matter if you're optimizing existing content or you're preparing to outsource new content. And we'll talk about that towards the end of the video, outsourcing new content with Surfer SEO's content editor. So without further ado, let's get started with this tutorial. Okay, so Surfer SEO has two main tools. The first one we're going to cover is the SERP analyzer, which is what you're seeing right now. And then the second one is the content editor. Now the SERP analyzer is the one you'll be using when you want to optimize existing content while the content editor is for new articles that you're going to either write yourself or have it outsourced. Now let's hone in here on the Surfer SEO Analyzer. We're going to type in a keyword from my website, freedomboundbusiness.com, and one of the keywords that I've been trying to rank for that I haven't been paying much attention to is a review article and specifically for a product called Gumroad. Some of you might be familiar with that, so we're going to do Gumroad Review. As you can see, I already have done Gumroad review in the past, so it'll save my history there. But anyway, this analyzer is really easy to use. All you have to do is type in your target keyword right there, as I just did. And then you want to decide whether you want to choose desktop or mobile for the indexer. And because I know most of my traffic comes from desktop visitors, I'm going to leave it on desktop. And then you have to decide if you want to do a quick analyzation or a full analysis. So basically what the full analysis does, it takes a screenshot of your competitors and instead of you having to go ahead and click on them and give them some dwell time, you won't need to do that because you actually have screenshots of their entire page. Usually though, I don't really care about that and I prefer a quick analysis. Next up, we're going to leave the location settings to the United States and then we're going to click the enter button or return button. Okay, so while it's loading here, it doesn't take too long. It takes like 30 seconds at most, sometimes a minute, depending on how many users there are. But you can see here it's pretty quick. But by the way, guys, this screen right here, this UI and the next screen that you're going to see is a lot more uh, impressive, in my opinion, when compared to Page Optimizer Pro or Quora. It's just a lot more user friendly, as you'll see. OK, so our analysis is ready for Gumroad review. Let's go ahead and click on this. And it says, please wait a few seconds. We are saving you hours of work, which is really true once you start understanding or if you've been doing any on-page optimization in the past. You know, it can take a while, especially if you're taking into account keyword density and the variations of that keyword. All right, so let's talk about what's going on here. This is the SERP analyzer. You see that there's a nice graph here. A lot of other on-page optimization tools don't have this type of setup or user interface. What you're going to see on the left hand side here is on page ranking factors. Now by default it starts off with word count. So that's what you're seeing here on the screen and it's taking the averages of 10. So on the first page there's 10 search results, right? So the average of the first 10 results is 2,339 words and then 2,500 and then it just keeps going down from there. Now, before I continue analyzing this and explaining, let me get my Gumroad review article URL. Okay, here it is. I'm going to copy this here and then I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to paste it right in here and click compare. And this is going to crawl my site real quick. And as you can see, my word count is 3,011 words. Now recall that we're taking a look at the averages by 10. So let's unclick this real quick so we can get a better idea of where my page stands when compared to the top 10. I'm going to scroll this to the left so we can only see the top 10. Okay, that's a lot better. Now I know that I'm on par when it comes to word count. So now that we know that, we're going to go ahead and actually exclude all pages. The reason we're doing that is because down here in the search results, there are the competitors that 
surfer has crawled, right? The page one competitors all the way to about 50. I want to carefully select my competitors. For instance, right here, you can see my page is ranking number four for this target keyword, Gumroad Review. But these first three sites are outranking me. So what I'm gonna do is include only these guys because it doesn't make sense to include Trustpilot or Medium.com or Niche Pursuits down here. I want to just include the people that are doing better than me and have Surfer SEO tell me how to fix my page or how to optimize my page so I can rank better and perhaps even overtake position three and then maybe all the way to position one. Okay, let's scroll back up here and you'll see that only the three competitors that I've chosen are showing up and I am ballpark at the word count. Now, this is typically where there's two ways of using the Surfer SEO tool. You can either take a look on the left-hand side by selecting each one of these on-page on ranking factors and checking where you stand on the graph, or you can use the audit feature, which is what I recommend and what a lot of the advanced Surfer SEO users do. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So let's go ahead and click on this audit button. All right, so this is what the Surfer audit looks like. It's telling me that there are one errors and four warnings. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at each one of these sections one at a time here. And we're gonna start off with the missing common backlinks really quick here because I don't really put too much weight on Surfer's backlink analyzer slash crawler yet just because I'm more used to hrefs. So we're gonna skip that part and go to true density here. Now true density is what's going to really move the needle in my experience of using this tool. It's going to tell you exactly what words you need to add to your page and what words and phrases you need to remove from your page. And this is all based off the competitors that I've chosen. As you can see here under the words tab, the word Gumroad needs to be added around three to 13 more times because my competitors are using it a little bit more than I'm currently using them. And Surfer SEO is telling me that it's 100% relevant. Of course, Gumroad would be, right? And it's also telling me that review needs to be added five to 13 more times, but I need to remove the word product about four to 11 times because my competitors are not using the word product as much. So as you can see here, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and I can sort all these by this action column. And this is gonna tell me which ones are the most important words that need to be added by percentage, right? The lower the percentage gets, the less effective it'll be at moving the SEO needle. Now let's take a look at phrases because I like to check this as well. So the first time I did the on-page optimization for this page, I most likely started off with phrases because you can see most of these check boxes are green, which means it's all good, but there are still a few improvements that I can make like adding this phrase and this phrase uh, at least one more time and removing shopping carts at least once. Now with that being said, if you're doing your own Surfer SEO audit and you got to the next section, words, and this subsection right here was a warning sign or red, that means that you need to increase or decrease your word count. So let's click on show details here real quick so I can explain what I mean. Surfer SEO is going to recommend a range of word counts that it recommends based off of your competitors, and that's indicated by this green section right here. When compared to my other three competitors, my word count is pretty much matched up to at least the first two. My guess is that income school is just ranking based off pure authority, which makes sense. These three sites at the current time of recording this video do have more authority than my site. So that's something to keep in mind as well. My hypothesis here is that I can possibly rank in position number three, and then to get to positions one and two, it would require off-page optimization. So make sure to have your word count be green check marked before you start working on optimizing for your words and phrases. Now we're gonna quickly go through the rest of this audit here. As you can see, I do have a couple warnings here. It says consider removing 18 to 873 words from paragraphs. Your web page has uh, 2,633 words in paragraphs while suggested range is 1760 to 2615 words. So I need to remove a few words from paragraphs. 
which I can do. It's telling me also to remove some bolded words. Let's take a look. All right, so I have a lot more bolded words. When it comes to surfer SEO, you don't wanna be the black sheep and be an outlier. And you don't have to follow these 100%. Like here, I'm very close to the edge, so this is not the most important factor in my opinion. Uh, sure, I'll decrease it a little bit and then I'll be good. But for this one, I, I think I should definitely reduce some of the bold here. Because remember, surfer SEO's audit is having you mimic success, what Google is already rewarding. All right, so the rest of the factors here in our audits are looking good. Uh, the H2 to H6 have enough words. The exact keywords are fine. I have one exact keyword in H1, one exact keyword in the title. However, I do need to add some partial keywords. Let's take a look here. Yeah, all right, so there's 2.59 partial keywords per 100 words in copy. I can increase this a little bit no problem. And then these other blue ones are just informational. They're good to know. So they're not must haves in my opinion when it comes to using surfers audit. The next section is the number of elements. Again, it's telling me to remove some strong bolded elements. That's okay. That'll be taken care of by the first one. And then there's time for first bit or byte. So if I could decrease this a little bit, that'd be great. The load time is is doing pretty good as well. To reduce this, I might have to do some uh, speed optimization. But let me put pause and then I'm going to optimize for some of the true density here and the bolded words here. And that should take care of the partial keywords perhaps once I start optimizing for words and phrases. I'll be back. All right, guys, I've went ahead and made the changes to that review article. And now I'm back on Surfer. I've already clicked on this refresh URL button, so I'm not gonna do it again. But this is what you would do. You would come back to Surfer once you've made your optimization changes, click the refresh URL button, and then click the audit button again. So let's go ahead and do that now. And first of all, in the true density section, you can see that there are a lot more green check marks on the word section and the phrases section. Okay, so this is very important right here, this red bolded text. Review the list of important terms and apply presented suggestions if it makes sense. To me, fitting in review Gumroad, I didn't feel like it was 100% necessary to add it. You can see here the relevance score was 40%, so it's not that important. Maybe I'll add it in the second round of uh, optimization changes by Surfer, but I'm not gonna do it right now. As for the words, let's sort this by action. And you can see that there's still a lot to add, but I took care of the most important ones already. There were a lot of 100%, 90%, and 80% relevance terms that I needed to add and remove. What I like to do is take care of the most important percentages, and the threshold is around 50 to 60%, and then save the rest for the second round of optimization. Because this does take a lot of work, guys. Not only the red exclamation marks, but also the yellow exclamation marks. They do have some percentages, uh, some high percentages as well here for this article. As you can see, it's telling me to add PayPal at least six to 19 times. But in my first round of optimization that I just did, it was kind of hard to add PayPal six to 19 more times to my article. It just didn't make sense. I'd have to rewrite a few uh, sections of the whole article and right now I just didn't want to do that. So that's something I may try later on. Remember these are just terms recommended based off of the three competitors that I've chosen. I've made enough changes in my opinion for the first round. I'm going to see if this moves the needle after seven or so plus days. All right so on to the next one which was the words in paragraphs. I still have to remove a few words this one takes a little longer, but luckily it's just a warning and I'm not too far out. I just have to decrease some words in paragraphs a little bit more and then I will be good to go there. This is something that I would save for the second round. And then the other warning before I went ahead and made changes was the strong bolded elements or words here. As you can see, I drastically reduced the amount of words that were bolded in this article and now we are in the green safe zone here. Okay, everything else was green lit and was doing pretty well. I do remember the partial keyword section that was taken care of. I didn't have to go into the tabs here in the, in the background in the SERP analyzer because just doing the true density word and phrases audit got me to the green check mark for partial keywords, which is great. I like that. 
Next is the number of paragraph elements, which I think is new. It wasn't on the previous screen. And the reason why this increased is because I had to add a few words or phrases in the true density section for the actual article to flow nicely and make sense. All right, let's close that. Other than that, everything is good to go, except this time for first byte. Let's take a look and then compare with the initial. Okay, so we have 1263 milliseconds for the first byte. And when compared this to the original audit, let's take a look, it actually drastically decreased. And the reason why, and I'm glad this did decrease, is because I recently installed a, a plugin called Perf Matters. So that decreased it by a lot. I also use WP Rocket. So if you guys are having trouble with your load times or this section here, then definitely install the plugins. I'll leave the links for those two in the description below because they're quite easy to install. And if your competitors have a faster loading website and yours is taking forever, that's not good for the end user. And then your rankings might eventually suffer because of that. All right, guys, to simply summarize the tutorial, what we did is we targeted our keyword Gumroad review in this case, and then we analyzed it with the SERP analyzer, which is what you're seeing now. We chose our competitors very carefully, and then we clicked the audit button. We saw the changes that we needed to make. We made the changes. We didn't do it all at once because that would have taken a long time, and it's more efficient to see what works and what doesn't in little chunks. So I'm going to be doing a second round of surfers SEO audit, especially in the true density section when it comes to adjusting for these words and phrases. Once you've completed your first round of optimizing with Surfer SEO's audit, then what I recommend doing is going to Search Console and submitting the page URL that you're ranking for to Search Console. That might move the needle a little faster. And then after that, I would recommend getting a rank tracker if you don't already have one and making notes on what specific date you made those surfer tweaks give it 7 to 14 days if your rankings increased great you don't have to do too much more you might do a second round of optimization if you feel it's necessary however if rankings didn't change then you're going to want to go here and do another audit remember to choose your competitors carefully because the serps might have changed and then optimize from there so that's pretty much how you use surfer seo for existing content. All right guys, thanks for sticking with me. That took a little bit longer than expected, but I hope you liked it and you really got a bird's eye view of how you can edit existing content, uh, I should say optimize existing content and improve your rankings with Surfer SEO. So I'm gonna leave a link to my Surfer SEO review article in the description below. So you can also learn about Surfer's other features like the content editor here. I'll show you that section I also made a tutorial video on it. Here we go. So let me click on this here real quick. The content editor is just a normal editor that you can share with your content writer or content provider, whatever. And they're basically going to handle the true density audit and deliver it already optimized, if that makes sense. So definitely take a look at this video. I explain a lot more. And it's definitely something that I also use alongside of Surfer's SERP analyzer. That being said, the price of Surfer SEO is starting at $29 per month. And the basic package is $59 per month. But there's also a lot more details on this Surfer SEO review article. So make sure to check it out. And also guys, before you go, there is a $1 trial for Surfer SEO if you want to try all of their tools for seven days. That link is in the description below. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll make sure to answer them and I'll talk to you in the next video.